Hi everyone, welcome to the Tony Tan Show and Podcast. I'm really excited today because we have a very special guest with us and his name is Kai Yuan. And he is one of the co-founders of Our Grandfather Story, one of the most prolific video content creators in Singapore today. So let us welcome Kai Yuan from OGS. Hi, Kai Yuan. Hello, hi. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, I, I'm very, very excited to have you. I mean, I, I've been a big fan of all your video series and uh, thank you for showing us so much wonderful content about parts of Singapore that otherwise would have been lost to our generation. You know, and I, I take a look at your uh, video, uh, YouTube channel video recently, and I realized that you are producing more than 600 or close to 600 videos with 200, uh, about 280,000 subscribers. I understand that you are just behind SGAG and Mothership in terms of subscriber. Well done. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think we are just behind them. Yeah. Uh, I think we are not the biggest now, but hopefully, you know, we can yeah, get there one day. La. <laughs> what a journey. And you are very young to be a co-founder of such a successful uh, video content provider. You know, and I'm really, really interested. And uh, I'm sure a lot of our audience are very interested about your story. Right? Such a young chap like you. How did you grow? You know, such a such a company to to such successes. Could you maybe share a little bit about your your growth with me? I'm really curious to hear more. Okay, okay. Uh, I think for us, like it was an accident, uh, Accident like, coming, coming into this. Okay. Yeah, so um, the whole journey kind of started when we were back in school. Right. So like just um trying to complete an assignment, and the assignment was to create like a visual startup. Yeah. So and we thought like, hey, why not? Uh, we were all very interested in documentaries, right? But I think about four years back then, there were not a lot of stories online. Uh, I think most of the content we get online is a bit more functional. La. So like your top 10 best cafes, that kind of thing. Yeah, so we I guess we need those, but you know, just that there, was, there wasn't a lot of stories. So we thought like, hey, why not? Let's just start telling stories online. Yeah, so that's how it started. Then we, we produced some videos, we put it out online and things just went viral. Yeah, so then after, you know, we completed the assignment, we said like, hey, um, like very wasted right if we just let this go then we thought like okay why not let's just continue like as a company as a startup and see like you know if it goes anywhere la. yeah so i guess uh it's been a pretty fun journey yeah four years like you know building this um of course like you know it took a lot of effort you know and there were a lot of people involved in this whole thing like trying to you know build this um channel build this like you know subscriber base um telling different stories like across singapore and also across southeast asia yeah so i mean it's not just like us the founders you know there's also like our colleagues and all our partners, you know, who are like in this journey together with us. Yeah. You know what I really like about what you just mentioned earlier? Things just got viral. Let me let me key into that viral word, right? What do you mean by things just got viral? Okay, give us a bit more context on the viral word. I also want things to go viral. Okay, okay. So I think at that point of time, so four years back, right, the, the context of viral was uh I think we just pushed out like you know our first couple of videos um online and so we started of course we started brand new right with a facebook page of like you know four page like which is, which is like the four founders yeah then like uh we put out a video then the video like uh it got picked up you know by people it got shared by people it got picked up by news outlets etc yeah so like the numbers went up and up so i think we did probably like a span of one week like pitch likes we probably had like 6k yeah and video views like much more than that yeah so i mean it's probably not the most viral thing on in the internet right but i think in our context it was like a sign of like some sign of life of life la, you know that people were interested in this yeah so but of course it's not the most viral thing on the internet yeah so don't get me wrong and yeah. that, that video was about the story about <coughs> the four founders is it no, the, the the first two videos, like one was about rainbow bread, ah. like you know the ice cream bread. Yeah, then another one was about coffee. Yes. Yeah, like cause like you know everyone loves like food lah. Yeah. yeah. So I think those two things, particular topics, like they connected well with the audience. Mm. Yeah. So which was why like you know people were interested and they shared, they commented. Yeah. So that that's why it kind of went viral. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? I, I'm a big fan of that rainbow bread story. I mean, I watched it like two times. Right, and I think it's very important for us to, you know, uh, put the lens on some of these last facades of the Singapore culture to keep them, keep them alive. So I think what you are doing is really important, uh, not just for your channel, but also for us as Singaporeans to reconnect our cultural heritage. And also thanks to you, I've been eating a lot of brata from Springleaf. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, I think you have did a video on Springleaf uh, brata as well, right? About how creative they were in brata creation. Mm. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. So a, you have touched lives, Kayuan. <laughs> right? Yes, Mine I think included. <laughs> So I just wanted to uh, uh, ask a, a few very important questions. 
uh, we all know that uh, video is exploding today as one of the uh, formats of media for consumption. Why do you think that is so compared to uh, the other traditional mediums? Uh, I guess like TV has been around for a long time, right? And people are just, as humans, I guess we are just generally drawn to nice like visuals. And it's a very easy way for us to consume things. Yeah, so a very brainless way, right? I think like after a long day of work, you know, you just want to relax, uh, watch something funny, watch something nice. Yeah, so I think it's just, I guess, our human habits. Yeah, so that's why, you know, all along we had TV. Yeah, so, and in today's age, I guess like it has transformed into like, you know, online videos. Yeah, so you have like YouTubers, uh, you have like, individual content creators you know trying to create like their own videos because like it's so simple now like you know with just your phone like you can do many many things yeah so i think in that sense you know that's why like videos will always be popular yeah and it will always be here yeah because just it's a very easy to consume like form like of content yeah so and it helps to like i guess um bring across a message in a very simple way Mm. Yeah, so that's why like you always be here, la. Yeah, which is why it's so popular today. Yeah, look at like TikTok videos. Yeah, within a thirty second like you know clip, like they can tell you so much. They can make you laugh. Yeah, they can make you talk about it for like the next one week or something. Yeah, so that's why like you know videos are really so popular today. And and I think that what you're saying is so there's a there's a big entertainment value there. And maybe do you think that in, you know people take more time to read and there's a, a big attention deficit in today's uh, environment. Do you think that's also one of the re- reasons why video is uh, gaining popularity? Mm, yeah, I guess so. I think that's one thing also. Yeah, because I think we don't have like, a lot of time, right? Yeah, so but then I think you we cannot completely say that also because we also spend a lot of time watching like Netflix, right. which are what, like 45 minutes long or like Korean dramas, which are one and a half hours long. Yeah, I never, I never understood how come Korean dramas can be so long every episode. Yeah. Well, well, I'm a big fan. <laughs> I will share more with you later about why Korean dramas are so interesting. Yeah, so, so <laughs> like, like, you know, I think on one side we have like short attention span. Yeah, so but I think it's a, on the supply side, you know, it, it has become so easy to make like videos also, right? That's why like, you know, we see like the rise of video. Yeah, so I think that there's two sides to it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And that part is very interesting, which I'll come back later, right? About how easy it is to create videos uh, for consumption today. Now, the other thing I want to ask you is that with the with all these smart devices and these millennials that's coming in, I'm sure that uh, these smart devices drive the consumption of videos because your TV is on your phone. Would you, would you agree on that? Yes. Yeah, your, your TV is on your phone. Yeah, like you look at what people are consuming now, right? Like people are, like let's say we talk about the um, older Singaporeans, like they are watching like Ge Thai yes. on their phones now right. on Facebook. Yeah, you, would have, you have never thought of that like, you know, 30 years back. Yeah, you, you 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 go to a place to watch Ge Thai. Yes. But now they watch it like on their phones. Yeah. Like every two times or three times every week. Yeah. Yeah, which is like crazy. Yeah. I mean even <laughs> even like selling fish and selling groceries, like Facebook Live, you know, my mom is spending hours every day on it. It is kind of like an entertainment for them as well, right? And this medium wasn't really there in the past. And also thanks to today's uh climate. Uns- uh, uncertain times people are spending more time on their phone mm. and people are going digital as well so that I think drives up the, the interest and drives up the uh, the consumption of this content as well wouldn't mm. you say yeah yeah definitely yeah so to this I think the I guess the environment has caused it yeah like in there, there are many many factors la, you know I think like in also um, I guess in the past one year you know like co- with COVID here I think you spend a lot more time at home uh, spend a lot more time on your screens also yeah so and you need a form of escape la. yeah right. right so then you see a lot of like healing programs coming up on like Korean shows yeah, yeah. so, so the there, soothe the yeah. soothe the soul yeah no. so so I think the, the environment has kind of like you know I guess um, let us you know into this path yeah yeah and, and you have been creating content for so long right now and you are so such a prolific uh, content creator and I'm sure for our influencers out there they want to know have you been trolled before? <laughs> uh, I think the, the I would say there are good comments bad comments like online yeah I guess that's what you get for being online yeah because like it's a free open space right anyone can just air like their thoughts yeah so definitely I think you know we, we see both sides lah. yeah and it's very normal you know to, to get that yeah so yeah and how do you feel when you are being trolled? Do you do you uh, do you feel depressed or you know what what was your mental state when you are trolled? Uh, 
I think it depends, lah. Like you know, sometimes like you know that people are just joking, or like you know, people. Uh, I guess we just try not to take everything too seriously. Mm. I mean, we'll look at everything, then we'll decide like, hey, uh, do we really need to pay attention to this, or mm. like, is this just uh something that, you know, we can uh just just let it go. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, it's difficult to say, lah. Yeah. Sometimes there are really valid like comments. Then we'll look at a comment and say that, hey, maybe we should have done something better. Yeah. Then we try to change that, lah. Yeah. So, but other times then we just like, okay, maybe like you know we can just like. Uh, put this aside. Yeah, doesn't affect us that much. Yeah, so to I mean we cannot deal with everything, lah. Right, there are too many comments coming in all the all the time. Yeah, yeah. So so what you are saying is that uh, we just have to look at all these comments positively because the internet is so unfiltered, right? And everybody have a right to say anything, but just don't let you take it personally. Yes. Yeah. I think just don't take it too personally. Yeah, and also like say, look at the number of comments you have, right? Like there are also not not everyone who watches it will comment. Right, so it's only a certain group of people who will comment, and out of that certain group, maybe like you might get one or two haters. Yeah, mm. I think that's fine. But you know that it might your your larger audience might be like you know few hundred thousand sort of audience. Yeah, so I think ultimately you can't please everybody lah. I think it's just too difficult. Yeah, it's a reality. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you will get such things. I think just have to you know um look at it and see whether you you wanna you have to deal with it. Yeah, so I think just like. Sometimes it's just better to just close one eye. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's that's very wise. You know, you just have to uh, filter yourself from all this noise that's out there and continue to focus what's important in your journey. So, Kayun, I mean, ask you another question, right? Because, you know, today you have been doing so much videos and this age, this digital age, there's a lot of influencers, positive influencers, and there's a lot of leaders today who are looking to brand, rebrand themselves mm. and make full use of all these digital channels, these media channels, and video is of course so important. Uh, how do you think video can play a part in amplifying someone's brand, uh, branding and influencing in that sense? Yeah, I think, uh, I guess it depends on which like platform you're focusing on, right? But I think uh, it can be one very powerful tool. Uh. Yeah, so I think um, it can help to, I think when you look at, say, your personal like content strategy, let's say you're posting on like LinkedIn. Yeah, so maybe you post like, um, I guess, two or three posts like a week, but those are maybe just like text sharing your personal experiences or like you know photos sharing your personal experiences like the video can help to add on another dimension to that yeah so but of course like it's a bit harder to do lah yeah so you might not have to order a lot of resources to do that all the time but you know it can be like for example once a year like you get on a video like share something yeah so and i think because in a video format you get to see the person right you get to look at their body language you get to see their expressions so uh, i think you, generally you can convey a lot more through that yeah so um and you can also use the video in other forms as well like you know it can be even like say instagram live right mm. yeah and you you can connect with your audience that you have yeah so it doesn't just have to be like a static thing yeah so it can also the video can also be in the form of like a live show yeah so where you get a lot more interaction with your audience yeah so depending on i guess which platform you are like you know you can use it for different ways lah, you know for personal branding yeah so it depends i think it depends your profile of your your personal branding, whether it's you to post videos on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or even TikTok, right? Because all these are all video content. Yes, correct. Yeah. Ultimately they're all videos. Yeah. So it depends on like uh who you're trying to reach out to, like who's your target audience. Yeah. And then like you can like work from there. Yeah. Mm, mm. Mm. So uh is there any like tips for branding? What must you do in a video for let's say I'm I'm branding myself what, because sometimes you see that people just say you just start your video, right? And you, you just you just start somewhere. But today, they, there's so much noise out there. Is it, pos is it important that we create a high quality video at the start or, or you know, wait for these resources to be available? Or would you suggest we just start and learn along the way? Okay. Uh, I think quality is a lot. It's very dependent on the skill. The, the skill that you have, right? So I would say it gets better as your skill level increases uh, and you only increase by you like constantly doing it. Yeah, so of course the best way to do that is to just start and do something. Yeah, so quality wise, that, that's like video quality. La. So quality wise, it will increase over time. Yeah, so then I think it also helps to, um, because once you start doing, then you, you can um, think about what you want to share. 
and then from there like it's a two way street right so you put it online people will comment okay this connects with them or this doesn't connect with them then you can refine like what you're sharing yeah so definitely I think like starting somewhere like mm. anywhere just helps the thousand miles starts from the first step yeah so just just like start start yeah. somewhere yeah it's uh, the best way la. and <laughs> if you look at all the top YouTubers you look at their first video the very first videos that most of the top YouTubers do is really very really bad in terms of quality but those they, they went viral after a while mm. I think uh, they kind of just play by ear and, and started the journey and refine along the way it's just what you have just said mm. right? yeah yeah everyone just start somewhere yeah so it might be like not very good at start yeah so like, like for example I watched this like uh, YouTuber who just like films himself going to camping yeah like in the rain yeah and he, and he always goes to camp in the rain yeah overseas lah not in Singapore yeah so it's, it's very interesting his first few videos are not very good yeah like the quality just really suck but after a while you can see the change yeah he gets really well like he knows what to talk about like he knows when to film yeah he knows when to edit yeah so it's like it's really good lah yeah so you can really see the change yeah as you as you go along as you progress yeah as you progress yeah so <coughs> You know, Kayu, and I look at all your videos, you know, of course, I never watched all 580 of them. But <laughs> I did quite watch quite a few of them. And I noticed one of the most important anchor points is a lot of stories. Mm. You have a lot of personal stories inside. In fact, all, most of your videos, in fact, every video that I watch, there is a story behind it. Whether it's a series about the interviews of, what's that? Can say, man? Is it? The, can the ask, series? man. Uh, can ask, man. Yeah. Everyone is an individual story, right? Mm. What do you think? Do you think that we should incorporate stories as for part of our personal branding when we go on video to engage with the crowd and mm. the audience? Yeah, I think stories are like the easiest way to connect like with the audience. Yeah, it's because when you are sharing like your personal stories, right? And there, there's like, they are probably like real experiences unless you're lying, la, right? <laughs> yeah, so but I believe you are probably not lying. So, um, I mean, it's just like talking to a friend like over lunch, right? Yeah, many at times you share stories. Yeah, so when you are making like videos, it's, it's, it's almost like the same thing also. Yeah, so you share stories and people will, like the audiences will try to connect with it. Yeah, so then from there, like, you know, you got, you get the, that conversation going. Uh. Yeah, so sharing stories is probably like, I, I think the easiest way, you know, to, to get things started. Yeah, so I mean, if you look at, let's say like LinkedIn posts, like many people are just also sharing their stories, right? Like, but most of them, they just like, uh, it's all in text, la, right? Yeah, so, and that is where like conversations get started because someone will come and say, hey, yeah, I have been through what you have been through. So, yeah, then this is my experience. Yeah, so, yeah, then like it's a good way to start things. Yeah. Mm. So, I, 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 I totally agree with you because today it's all about storytelling. Uh, some people even say that it's story showing because there is an emotional connection and people remember stories more than they remember facts. I think that is one of the reasons why you are so successful because you are a storyteller, right? OGS is a story uh, creation organization, in my opinion, right? And, you know, there's also, you, you have created so many videos in such a short period. A lot of our audience are very uh, uh, um, curious, in, me included. Where do you get so much inspiration for so much content? Because a lot of us are looking to start the video journey or creating a YouTube channel. But creating a content story, a content strategy, is not something that comes naturally to a lot of people out there. How, what are, what's your advice to, to curate such content, you know, uh, in your opinion? Okay, okay. I think for us, it's a bit different. So we are an organization, right? Like the team has like, what, 20 people like finding stories and looking for stories like to tell every day. Yeah, so in that sense, it's a bit different. Uh. Um, but I think like the best way to start like as an individual is just really start by talking to people. Yeah, so like the we always talk to people and we are just generally very capable. La. That's why we uh, I find- I think always curious. La. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very, very curious, very okay. capable. So we find a lot of like stories. Yeah, so that's how we find so many stories. Yeah, so um, being curious, I think you can uh, help yourself, like, you know, talk to, how is it? Being curious, like, you can go and, like, talk to people. Yeah, so you can, like, go and um, ask them, like, what's going on. Then you will find all these stories. And at the same time, like, you also discover something about yourself. Yeah, so it's a, I think it's a very important, like, journey. Yeah, so, like, when you start talking to people, la, yeah, and you can actually, like, get a lot out of it. Yeah, so just be curious and go and talk to people. Then you'll find out what they want also. So like them as audience, right? Then you can also like customize your content like for them. Mm. Yeah, so it's like kind of like a two-way street. La. So let's say for example, I am uh, someone that's in AI, for example, or someone mm. that's in digital innovation or clean tech or or or, or maybe sustainable uh, uh, 
uh, growing your food. And I want to start a YouTube channel. What you are saying is that be curious and go and talk to everybody that's within your area of interest and and find out is there any interesting content that you could share, right? Mm, yeah, then yeah. That, that could be one way. Yes. But then how do you approach them to shoot a video then? You know, is there an art to do this? Uh, no, I think there's no art. I think just like, uh, just ask, uh, just be straightforward. Say like, hey, I want to do this. Yeah. And I, actually, I think most people are very okay with it. Yeah, so I think Singaporeans are generally quite shy. So you probably don't dare to ask. La. But I think you just have to get over that hurdle, right? Most of the time, people will say yes. Yeah, in, in my experience. La. You will get one or two rejections along the way. That's normal. Yeah, so, but I think generally, most people are very open. Yeah, and I can see that if, you know, judging by what you tell me and looking at the videos that you've created, you actually talk to all walks of life. Provincial shop owner, uh, brata, store owners, kacang putih, man. <laughs> All right. So you what you say that is relevant because you know, in regards of education, in regards of sex gender or the occupation that you have, I see that you're getting all these videos in. So I think that when you say you ask sincerely and if you're able to do bring your story to life, I think people will support it, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah, definitely people will support. Yeah. And uh, like people are generally very open. Yeah, the 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 hurdle is whether you dare to ask or not. Yeah, so if you if you don't dare to ask, then you know you're not even making the first step. It sounds then, like a date to me, actually. Yeah, yeah, I guess you can say <laughs> that. I guess you can say that. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's important to approach it like you know, um, I think where we always come from is like trying to build like a connection, like building like a friendship with them. Yeah, rather than you know just coming in like as a stranger and like you know because then the relationship is a bit different. Yeah, so like you must know how to connect with them. Oh, that's a very good point. So are you saying that before we shoot the video, uh, you know, you need to, how do you get to know them better? Uh, so for us, like our process is like, you know, um, meeting up with them first, you know, talking to them, having like what we call pre-interview. Yeah, so that helps to, um, helps you to understand them better. Yeah, so, and also takes away that pressure la, of like, you know, well, first time like I'm meeting you and I have to shoot a video with you. Like it's, it's very pressurizing for most people without any like formal training. Yeah, so, you know, having that time before, you know, doing that video, or, um, you can probably meet them, talk to them first, understand them better as a person. Yeah, so then, you know, you help to, you'll get better results mm. in the video. Yeah, because at that point of time, you know, they'll be comfortable with you. Yeah. yeah. I think I can resonate with them as a photographer, but we will take portraiture shots of someone. It is always easier to talk to them mm. by give them a sweet or something, warm the warm the subject up so that when they take a picture, it won't look so stiff. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's more more naturally. Mm. I think we are we are both in the same uh, zone or same uh, agreement in this area. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now you say about being curious, how about uh would focusing on current trending topics help to create content as well? Mm. In the news, for example. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. So I mean, when um, in the social media space, I think we are always looking out for trending topics, right? Because mm. you want to jump onto the trending topics mm. so that, you know, you can maximize like your content. Yeah. So for example, like uh, when we did the first video about rainbow bread, right? Um, it was because there was this uh, article that was on BuzzFeed uh, that slammed the rainbow bread and said that you shouldn't eat ice cream with bread. And there was a huge uproar from Singaporeans saying that like, this is what we do and like, we like it this way. Who are you to say that we shouldn't do that? Yeah, so riding on that, you know, then we made that ice cream bread video and then it went crazy. Yeah, so it's always good to jump onto trending topics. Yeah, so because like people are really talking about it, you know, then you, know, you can come into the conversation and hopefully if you provide something different, you know, then like it goes further lah. Yeah, because people will look at that and say that, hey, this is something that I never thought about or something that I didn't know. Yeah, so then people will generate, will just talk about it and you'll generate buzz. Mm. So in, in, your, in your journey to create all this content, do you give yourself a schedule to launch one video per month or something? Is there something like that or it's just unplanned? As and when you feel like it, you just launch? Uh, for us, because we are an organization, right? So it's, it's, there's a more fixed schedule uh. so every every month, every week we probably launch at least two to three videos yeah so those are pretty fixed yeah so um i think we do that uh in order to keep up with like you know the social media algorithm as well so there's there is some demand to that we have to 
have a regular flow of content. Yeah, otherwise, you know, it affects your um, ratings, you know, and it affects like your the algorithm. Yeah, so there's some sort of pressure there. La. Um, but I mean, as a, if you are doing it as an individual, you probably don't have to do it, you know, as uh, like as crazy as us. Yeah, you know, maybe like once a week mm. is good. Or if you can't, then maybe like once in two weeks. Yeah, as you, as you go along, you know, you'll get better and you like, hopefully you can put out more content. But I would say um, relevant content is more important. So like quality, quality is also important. It's not just about the quantity. Yeah, because you can put out many, many, many pieces of content. But if they are not relevant to anyone, they don't resonate with anyone, then there's no point. Yes, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. It is for the audience, it's not for you at the end yeah. of the day. Yes, right? it's if for the, the audience. If you cannot resonate with the audience, then that is pointless. Yeah. So talking about resonating with the audience, right? Uh, how long did you take to reach from zero to 270 over 1,000 subscribers? <laughs> uh... I mean, I guess that's like four over years. Yeah, because like currently we are about 270, 280, I think, thousand on YouTube. Yeah, so I mean, we have other channels as well, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. Yeah, so, but I think it took about four, four years. Yeah, so and we are still growing. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a wonderful result. But do you ever use digital marketing to grow or is this organic growth? Uh, I would say um, we don't usually do paid marketing yeah so we do a little bit but not too much because we are not a big organization right yeah so generally we rely on a lot of organic uh, marketing but sometimes we do do digital marketing as well um you know when we launch certain campaigns you know that are a bit fresher or when we launch like new kind of experiments then that's when we try like to try different ways you know to help it like reach our expectations mm. yeah so it really depends but overall i think like uh we do i guess i would say that we use them in uh, certain areas yeah not all the time yeah when, it, when it needs help yeah I see certain boosters along the way. Yes, correct. Yeah, because like, you know, we are not a huge company, right? With like huge amounts of money to throw into like, say, paid advertising on Facebook or paid advertising on YouTube. Yeah, so we spend cautiously. I yeah, see. Mm, and strategically. Yeah. I see. And I understand from some uh, video content creators, uh, especially this re is more relevant to corporates, but I'm not sure whether it's relevant to personal branding and your uh, personal YouTube channels where they say that once in a while you do an epic video and then mm. sometimes you just do normal videos and then you, do, you launch like two epic videos, uh, you know, uh, a year. So epic videos are probably videos that you spend a lot more budget and that looks much more creative, uh, quality is much higher. Mm. Uh, and, and that shakes shake things up a little bit. Mm. Would you think that this strategy, like, you know, once in a while launching an epic or higher quality video uh, uh, is useful to personal influencers or people who own YouTube channels? Mm. Yeah, I think it's useful. Yeah, I think uh, once in a while you need to give your audience something different also. Yeah, because like you won't want them to look at the same thing throughout the year, right? Mm. Yeah, so like having those kind of content, you know, it helps to like give a bit of variety and it helps to keep things fresh. Yeah, and also who knows like, you know, you might, that might just open up another path for you. Yeah, so definitely I do, I do think that, you know, it helps. Yeah. Now talking about epic video, right? I mean, what defines an epic video? And I also know that there are many types of videos. So, so far, the videos that we talk about are the videos that everybody is associated with. You know, we show a video or we show an interview, you know. But I know, Kayan, through your videos, as you can see, I'm a big fan. There are those that's animation. And I know there's some that you use like motion toys to like mm. toy story type, right? That you create these type of videos. So, I'm very curious, uh, is, is there multiple ways of presenting videos or is just a, and will that be useful in, in you, uh, you think to shake things up a little bit rather than just every time just shooting the same, same video format all the time? Mm, yeah, definitely. I think like uh, different story treatments help. So mm. like sometimes it can be animation. Sometimes it can just be like stop motion. Yeah. So like uh, definitely helpful. But of course it must fit the content that you're trying to do. Lah. Yeah. So if it doesn't fit the content, then, you know, there's no point using that particular video treatment. Yeah. So um, but ultimately, I think what's important is still like, you know, um, the topic. Uh, of the video that you want to talk about, you know, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to bring across? Yeah, because that like matters like a lot more. Yeah, so the uh, beyond that, then it's just presentation. Yeah, how you want to present it. Yeah, it can be like video, comic or whatever. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so like what's important is like the topic that you want to bring across. Like mm. that must be attractive for the audience. Yeah, mm. 
then you can think about video treatment. Yeah. And I, I, you told me, and we spoke about video treatment, and I, I also uh, realized also that sometimes certain topics that we talk about is not easy to illustrate mm. uh, with our video formats, not even with your bureau, yes. maybe advanced topics, right? And to illustrate those, you really need uh, 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 maybe a graphical element mm. or, uh, to help. Uh, what do you think about that? Is it is it helpful in that sense? Yes, yeah, definitely helpful. So let's say like, uh, for example, we talk about topics like mental health. Right. right? Mental health is, uh, is really like, you cannot see it, right? Yeah, so like a lot of things happen in the head. Yeah, so it happens like um, you cannot see it visually. So let's say, for example, we, if we were to do an interview uh, like with someone with, uh, you know, mental health condition, then like uh, it would just be a video of the person talking, right? So you don't get much out of that. Uh, it's not very visually attractive. Right. Yeah, so then you can think about using other video treatment like animation, you know, to animate, say, like visually show um, the person's experience. Right. Yeah, so then you'll make it like a lot better, you know, rather than just having a talking head video yeah, and seeing the person talk. Yeah, so not that it's not good, but you know, that you can try to make it better in other ways. La. Yeah, so that, you know, people can, your audience, you know, will find it more interesting. Yeah. Yes, and mm. th th this again shakes things up a little bit, right? But my, my question to you is then, uh, how difficult it is to do this type of animation? I mean, <laughs> like a person like me, I, I want to, you know, I'm only alone, you know, my budget is extremely low. Uh, is it difficult to pick up these skills to do some of this animation? Okay, I think for animation, it's very difficult. I think like, you know, as an individual, it'll be very difficult to do it. Yeah, so it might not be the most realistic thing, you know, unless you have a lot of money, a lot of resources. Yeah, so it's not the most realistic thing to do. Lah. Yeah, so but say like what is more realistic? I think if you can dumb that down to something like a comic, if you can draw, you know, you can just draw a one panel comic. That would be good as well. Yeah, so it doesn't necessarily just have to be like animation. But that sounds like, a, like something that I can do. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure whether my kindergarten artwork still works, <laughs> but I'll try with crayon. <laughs> But I think that's really in interesting because uh, I think a lot of our audience here might go into kind of stumbling block on some topics that they do not know how to present. Mm. So I think what you say, animations and cart cartoon stills mm. are a great way to uh, become stop gaps, uh, right? To fill those gaps up for, for them as they do their video creation, right? Yep, yep. And even like, I think memes as well. So like, uh, you probably, I think most people probably see a lot of memes like every day on social media right even like uh our minister uses a meme to try to convey like the um measures for covid <laughs> yeah i don't know if you've seen that yeah so like memes are it mean if you can't draw you can always make a meme it can also help to convey messages yeah if you need to yeah, yeah so there's really no end to how you want to use your creativity to create video content I think this is this is this is you know the sky's the limit, mm. right? It can go. It's just go as far as what your creativity can come up with. But I think we all agree that to date our discussion that video is one of the fastest growing um, uh, format, and because of so many uh, 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 trends coming together, be it because of the pandemic, be it because of digitization mm. and the growth of uh, smart devices, I think everything is coming to really really grow this uh, uh, content and this this uh, media channel as well. And you also have shared so much with us about what sort, how to create this content, uh, what sort of videos to use, and the importance of story for personal branding. Now, I want to uh, talk a little bit about people like us, right, who don't have your technical skill sets, who are beginning on this journey with, with just little more than just a, a smartphone. Uh, how is it that we can create good videos, right? that even stand a chance uh, in this noisy environment <laughs> that people will watch more than five seconds without switching off our videos, right? Because I've seen that you have done a documentary on Pai Zhou in China. I know that you, you, you were there and you don't have a lot of equipment and you used the iPhone or the smart device to record the entire documentary, which I thought was fascinating. Could you share with our audience like what are some of the things that we need to take note of, uh, you know, in terms of skill sets and equipment <laughs> that we we can shoot a good, decent video. Mm, okay. I think uh, for a good, decent video, I think you just need like nice visuals and also good audio, right? So um, visuals, I think you just need to uh, practice shooting and you can also look 
like just go on YouTube, like you know how do you shoot with a mobile phone? Yeah, I think that's one of the easiest way to learn, right? So then the second thing would be about good audio. Yeah, so if you you need to hear, be able to hear what the person is saying. Yeah, as simple as that. So you know if you can get a mic for your phone, that'll be great. Yeah, if not, then just hold the phone closer to the person, right? Yeah, so those two elements will make up like I guess uh will be the most important thing. To make a very simple good video, yeah. So, uh, just need to take note of these two things, ah. Mm. Yeah, mm. that's such a simple answer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, is it really that simple? Okay. So let me just tie back to some of the top points that you spoke earlier. We talk about starting video. Mm. We will. It is a journey. Yeah. So I think I can relate with, to you with you because now we take the video, mm. we take the phone, and we record. The sound is good. Um, the video is not shaky. Mm. That is good enough to watch. Yeah. So we take more, and then suddenly we do more uh, YouTube tutorials, and we realize there's something called B-rolls, mm. right? We can use to add, add, add onto the videos, and then suddenly we have a new dimension. Mm. And then along the way, we decide to learn transitions. Mm. Wow, suddenly there's a new, the new format, you know, how to transit. And you know, people, wow, this is really great. You know, it's looking more and more professional. Right? And then later we will know how to add in lightings and things like that, right? And then I think the video will start. Mm. Because this is not a topic that I think uh, we can just cover into this conversation. Mm. I know it's going to be a, a, a very big topic. But would you agree that three things that's very important, lighting, sound, and stable, uh, and make sure that the picture is stable. Mm. These yeah. are the three first things that we need to get first, correct first. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then you need to be entertaining after that. Yeah. yeah. And then we then. don't really need to have very expensive <laughs> equipment, right, Kayuan? Yes. Uh, I think you don't need very expensive equipment. Yeah. Your phones will do. Yeah. Right. And, and would you agree that uh, we don't need the high-end cameras? Uh, sorry, uh, Eric, not to disrupt you. I know we are using high-end cameras here. <laughs> but I'm saying that because now the, the consumption is on so, uh, on phones most of the time, even at 720 DPI, uh, even you're not high D, uh, high definition, you're not even 4K. But because of the format is so small, it really doesn't matter. Would you say so? Mm, yeah, I think for a start, like, you know, uh, it's not about the equipment. Yeah, so slowly as you progress, I think as things get more serious, I believe you will try to improve your setup, right? But for the start, you know, I think starting like simple is the best. Lah. Yeah, so that, you know, you just get things started. Yeah, that's more important. Mm. And thank you so much for sharing this with us because I think this is something that a lot of audience really want to know. Although the, the what we are saying is uh, quite simple here, but it's all a matter of practice. It's all, mm. all a matter of uh, learning along the way and incorporating all these changes along the way. But we really need to start this journey somewhere, right? And, you know, I want to ask you another question, right? Is Let's say we are shooting someone like... Uh, a lot of people look awkward when they look at the camera. Mm. But what would your advice to this? When you shoot people, for example, is there, is there something you tell them, oh, uncle or auntie, uh, don't worry, don't look at the camera, look off axis. <laughs> what the advice when people are very uncomfortable in front of the camera? Uh, I think it's very normal that... Uh, it's very normal that people are... Awkward, right? Yeah, because I think most people are not trained uh, to be like actors, actresses. Yeah, you probably can't match up to that. Yeah, so I think the easiest way to try to work around that awkwardness is to just treat it as a normal conversation, like what we are having now. Yeah, so um, I think that's the easiest way. Yeah, because it, then it, it kind of reduces that stress. Yeah, so and I think uh, environment helps also. So let's say like, you know, um, if you are an, in an environment where you're not shooting with big crews, big lights, big cameras, then it helps to reduce that stress. Yeah, so like, you know, when we go out to interview people, um, it's a very small setup, you know, not very intrusive. Then they are less like, uh, I guess, worried. Uh. Yeah, so mm. and it will be much easier on them. There's less pressure. Less intimidating. Yes, correct. Yeah, so I think that is like one factor that can help. Yeah, if you are not so experienced. Right, mm. right, right. So, um, let us now switch the conversation a little bit to the tech side, the mm. technology side of video. Mm. Now, you know that uh, there's a lot of new tech coming into play now. Uh, we have artificial intelligence coming in. In fact, you look at Adobe, everything is artificial intelligence. Our cameras have so much AI built in today. Uh, what do you think, how do you think this thing is playing out? Do you think AI will dominate or will... Will will come into will we augment video creation or will we take over video creation? What are your thoughts about technology? Mm. I I I believe it won't completely take over. Like, I think it will probably um value add like in some ways. You know, uh perhaps for example, say um making the first edit of your video like a rough cut. 
Mm. Yeah, I can see that happening. But will it come to like making the final edits? Uh, I feel like you probably still need a human to do that. Yeah. So so for me, I personally feel that you know it can help in some ways. But you know, I think ultimately it's a combination of the forces, like the two forces, both like AI and also like a human. Yeah. So it's not a one one sided thing. Mm. Yeah. And and in your work, because AI is not just about inside your Adobe, it's not just inside your cameras. Do you use drones in your work, for example? Uh, sometimes, not not too often, but sometimes yes. <laughs> yes, yeah. but drones itself is an AI. Is everything in drones is AI? Mm. Terrain avoidance, image recognition. Mm. So would you say that actually you you use quite a lot of AI in your daily work, from your editing software to your cameras to the drones that you're using? Mm. AI yes. is very part, much part of your life right now. Yes, yeah, I think it's, it's integrated into a lot of things, like even let's say like um transcription software, yeah. So like we put a we put in an audio file, um for 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 transcribing, right? You know, it makes our life easier rather than just having like a person to transcribe everything, yeah. So definitely like it's in in part of our lives, uh, yeah. Actually, come to think of it, uh, AI is ruling you, you know, Kaiyuan. <laughs> you told me earlier oh, you need to load up certain frequency so that you, you know you get certain ratings because of the logarithms that's inside these social media sites, right? Yes and no, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we we can't control that, right? That's not within our control. Yeah, so we just have to yeah. uh, live with it. <laughs> yeah, so you are very good friends with AI today. Mm. I will say that maybe eighty percent of that is augmenting your work, uh, making your work a lot easier, a lot more productive, doing more with less. Mm. So, so would you agree that because there's two two schools of thought, right? AI taking over and AI augmenting. Mm. The way I look at what you're saying is that you are more like an AI augmenting kind of. You lean towards AI as an augmentation mm. for humanity. Yep. Wouldn't you say so? Yes. Yeah, I think it will be a partnership. It's a partnership, and I totally yeah. agree with that as well. Because there's so much fear and anxiety out there about all these technologies taking over humans, you know. And and I that's why it's very important to hear from you as well as a video content creator that's using all these AI tech. What's your take? You know, and, and this gives another dimension from the other uh, conversation we have other thought leaders and industry leaders on AI. Mm. Is there any other things that you want to add about technology and the work in, in your area of work? Mm, I guess for us, like, I think we use a lot of technology, like, you know, in our day to day, like, work. La. Yeah. So, and I think as it grows, like, it will continue to shape, like, you know, um, not just like, the production values you know you continue to shape like the industries also like you know in um business models also yeah so like i think it's uh it's quite amazing la. yeah so i mean without technology you can also say that we wouldn't be here talking like as well because like there wouldn't be social media and there wouldn't be the rise of like content creators etc yeah so i think it's quite an exciting journey la. yeah to see where you take us right uh, yeah. me too uh, I'm also quite positive of the future as well where technology is leading right that's why the future in the present now um, I hear so much about all this about your company about your content creation strategy about how we use video as a format to optimize whether it's our personal brand our YouTube channels and I want to hear a little bit about you Kai Yuan. I mm. want to I want to see the real you right the raw you I know that you have been uh, you are young when you started this organization with your co-founders. And I know that life hasn't been a bit of roses. You know, for entrepreneurs, our young entrepreneurs out there who are now starting up, and I know that in this period, a lot of people are trying to start up their own organizations. Uh, could you share a little bit about your journey? Uh, you know, and was there a time where you were really down and how do you overcome that? You know, and do, do you have any tips for our young entrepreneurs who are coming out from school who wants to be like you? <laughs> right? Could you, could you just share with them what are the things that you should you would, they should look out for? Okay. Uh, I mean, we are not like the most like successful people, also like right. So, uh, but I guess the the past year has been quite difficult, also quite humbling, lah. Right. So, um, trying to survive in in times of like COVID, yeah. So, um, I think it's a very stressful kind of like job, yeah. So, uh, if you wanna be an entrepreneur, you know, then you should be prepared for that, yeah. So, but I think it also teaches you like a lot of things, you know, like your teaches you like discipline, you know, teaches you like communication. So it's it's been I guess very fun yeah so but I think one thing that uh I guess everyone needs to I guess if you are embarking on this journey and you need to like 
uh, be prepared for is like, you know, think about like the resilience. La. Yeah, so um, I think a lot of times you, people will tell you that hey, you cannot do it. La. Yeah, so, but, you know, uh, I think you just need to do it and then you will get the answers and you will, from there you will tweak, you will learn. Yeah, so you just have to keep like going. Yeah, so I think that is like, uh, what's the most important part? La. Yeah, because uh, when you start your journey, you will probably face a lot of, uh, naysayers, yeah, saying that hey, this is like not a good idea. You can't do this, yeah. So, but you know, if you press on, yeah. So, uh, you might have, let's say, not very good results. But from there, you know, you can tweak, uh, you can like tweak your strategy and you can work from there. Then it helps you get better. And eventually, I believe like you'll be able to get somewhere. Yeah. So you must have that resilience that like, in you. Uh. Mm. Yeah. So it's like that grit and that perseverance, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, and I think like, because you're like, I guess starting a new thing, then um, there'll be a lot of things that you have to figure out yourself. Yeah, a lot of things that you have to work it out together with your team also. Yeah, so, and that is like where that resilience, like, you know, having that resi resilience will help a lot. Mm. Yeah. Mm. When you started your journey, do you have actually have a game plan or you just, you're not very sure, you just go and try and see what happens? I think we have a rough game plan, but, uh, you know, then, uh, from there is really just like tweaking and like refining yeah so you must have a rough game plan like definitely i think without a plan then you know you plan to fail mm. <laughs> yeah so so you should have a plan um but you know you have to be flexible yeah so you know if let's say something is not working out then you should change you know your plans yeah so have a plan but be flexible yeah that's important and what do you think about passion you know, was passion one of your key drivers for you when you started? Uh, definitely. I think passion is definitely one of the key drivers. Yeah. So, but like, I mean, if you are starting a business, then you still have to make it work, right? So like a passion doesn't fit you, right? Yeah. So you have to make that passion into like, you know, something that can help you make money. Yeah. So when you say passion, were you more passionate about as an owner of a company or were you more passionate about creating content? Uh... I guess both, yeah. So I think we were, we wanted to make sure that, you know, while we were creating content that we like, right, we could still create a company and a business model that works. Mm. Yeah, that is sound. Mm. Yeah, so um, that was extremely important for us. Mm. Yeah, because we, we didn't just want to like, oh, we are so passionate about this, let's do this. Mm. And we don't care about whether, you know, this, you can monetize yeah, it. You can monetize it. Yeah, I think, in the if you are in it for the long run, then you cannot run it that way, la. Yeah, it has to make sense. Mm. Yeah, otherwise, how how do you continue like you know living? I mean, you need like to you need money also, right? Mm. Yeah, so that was like very important for us. Yeah, so that's why we try to make sure that you know everything like makes business sense, la. Yeah, yeah. Just now we talk a little bit about a very humbling experience. So when you're very humbled, when you're brought low, you know, those nights that you couldn't sleep. What was the one thing that keep you going at the end of the day? <laughs> uh, I think the one thing that keeps me going is, I guess, um, the the team. Yeah, so I think the team, like, you know, seeing how the team has grown, seeing how the team is, like, everyone is, like, putting their best mm. and, like, fighting very hard. Yeah, so I think that is, like, a very big motivating factor. And also, of course, like, um, the audience, right? When you look at uh, content that you put out and you see like, you know, content that resonates with the audience, then you're like, well, oh, we are actually doing something right. Yeah, so like, you know, let's fight to keep this and, you know, make this work. Yeah, so I think those like are very important things for me. Yeah. So in this, in this last four years, I'm, would you say that you have periods of fear, anxiety, you know, as you run this business? Yeah, definitely. I think... Uh, doubts. Yeah, definitely. I think... You do experience that lah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I always say it feels like, I mean, I don't have a kid, but uh, it feels like raising a kid lah. Yeah, because it's like your... Your baby. Your baby, right? Yeah. As in, you will kind of worry about it every day. Like, yeah, I guess it's just like how parents worry about their kids every day. Mm. Yeah, I think it's like very normal. I think that's very important, right? To yeah. let uh, our aspiring entrepreneurs to know that you know, having fear, doubt, anxiety is normal in that journey. Mm. Maybe it's even part, even necessary for your growth in that journey, right? Mm. Yes. I think without this, we, you know, we will not be where we are today, mm. right? So any last advice for our audience out there? Anything at all before, uh, you know, we end the show, Kayen? Last advice, uh? uh Any last love for all of us? 
I think the last advice would be just uh, if you are thinking of starting something, like just do it. Yeah, I think there's no um, there's if there's nothing stopping you, you know, just just do it because like uh, it will lead you to unknown places. You mm. know, it will lead you down paths you never even thought that it possible. Yeah, so I think that will be the best thing you can do for yourself. Mm. Yeah, the Nike logo, just do it. Yeah, just do it. Yeah, but of course, like you know, don't quit your job just to do something, right? As in, you have to make sensible decisions. <laughs> but, right. you know, just do it. Uh, keep it within your limit, within your resources, and just try something. Yeah, then just do it for yourself. I yeah. see. I think that's really important. Uh. Mm -hmm. I think this this has been a recurring theme, right? Always start from the first step, start from the third step, start somewhere. Don't delay, life is short. Mm, yeah. Right. So, Kayen, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I think uh, I'm very honoured to have you. Uh, thank you for your busy, busy schedule to join us today. And, you know, you are the co-founder, such an important content creator in Singapore. And for all, all our audience out there, if you are interested to know more about our culture, our heritage in Singapore, please, please do yourself a favour. Go to OGS, our grandfather's story. Check out the awesome videos they have inside. And you'll learn so much more about branding, content creation, storytelling, and know a little bit more about Singapore heritage. Please uh, take a look at what Kai Yuan has created at this team all this time for us. So Kai Yuan, thank you so much uh, once again for joining the Tony Tan Show and podcast. And we again look forward to have you back in the show at some point to discuss some other uh, newest content as we uh, continue to create more and more interesting things going forward. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kai Yuan. I'll see you soon. See you. Take care.